So this is my 1951 John Deere B. We've had it for almost three years now. When we got it, it was in pretty rough shape. So I already have a couple videos about fixing up this tractor to the point it is now. So before I put the final coat of paint on, let me show you how we got to this point so far. Looks like we got this one. <sighs> anyway, the parts are back from the machine shop for the John Deere B. And that's because the pitting was so bad that even though we went 90 thousandths over 45, still had some pitting. should just go right in. to go backwards to go forwards. Yeah. A little bit of water, no metal shavings though. Uh-oh. This gear and the housing. So don't lose that. So this should be the range gear. Gonna be shims behind here because any. Yeah. There we go. Here's what I think the culprit is. And just like that, pops right out. The thing has to go in from this side. One thicker gasket. So I'm going to, according to the manual, it should be one to four thousandths. So just a quick side note, that bearing is... A little bit of the brass chips off. So we're using Van Sickle paint 
And this is the color Gloss Ag Green 45171. Then we've got the Tractor Supply Hardener. This stuff has worked good for us in the past. And then the Van Sickle Reducer. So we're just using a simple 8 to 1 to 3 mix ratio. Just to put the hardener in before the reducer. little filter in the paint gun and this is the Harbor Freight. It's important to use one of these strainers before you pour the paint. You want to make sure it's a nice consistent stream coming out of the spray gun. Here's the respirator that I'm using. I have two brand new 3M filters. All right, it's been about 24 hours since we finished painting, and I think it turned out great. Now let's start taking the tape off. It's one thing I really wanted to do was not paint the radiator hoses. I think it looks much cleaner with those nice black hoses and silver clamps. And the manifold, I wasn't really worried about getting paint on it. We'll run it for 10 minutes and then it will all burn off. All right, I just finished putting the alternator on and the coil on. Now I'm gonna put the distributor on. So I'm gonna need one of these gaskets. Pretty much the same gasket for any distributor or magneto on pretty much any of these antique tractors. Which way, these distributors, you can have them off 180 degrees. I don't remember which way it was, but luckily, since it's a two-cylinder, if you have this off, you can just flop these, switch the two spark plug wires, and you should be good to go. So now I start with the timing, having the distributor facing about to the, towards the front of the tractor. And there's a clamp on the bottom. And then I'll just, actually I think the I don't know which one went where for the spark plug wires. Hopefully I'm right. If not, we'll swap them. Okay, let's see if it'll fire up.
as you can see, it's all together and it's been painted. Now I'm just working at putting on the decals. Here's the decals I have. I ordered them from Steiner and they're the vinyl cut ones. I like to start with the small decals, like the air cleaner one, the Rollomatic, the one on the front of the seat, the one on the back of the seat rest, and the Power Troll one. Now I'm getting ready to do this one on the side of the hood. So what I like to do with these is, I know it has to be about two inches back from the grill, so I measured it two inches back and then taped it into place, and then I adjusted it to where it was centered between these two marks on the hood, which is about a half an inch on each side. And then I put tape along the edges so I know where to place the decal. Just take a paper towel, wipe off any dust. You, know, you wanna be careful with this. You wanna make sure you get the letters and the letters don't stay on the backing. And now I just get it lined up. Start in the middle. I take one of these for scraping Bondo and just make sure the letters are fully adhered. And now my favorite part, peeling them off. Do this carefully. You don't want the letters to peel back off the metal. All right, here's the last thing that has to go on the tractor. It's the headlights. So I painted these, but I didn't really do that good of a job, so I might paint them again with the gloss black. But I got new uh, terminals for the back. Here's a John Deere part number. These are actually new old stock, so kind of interesting. Then I got new 12 volt bulbs, new glass, because this one was broken, and then this gasket. There's a number from Steiner that goes around the glass. Putting it on the glass isn't hard, it's getting it to stay on. It's getting it to stay on when you, yeah. Okay, I put a little bit of silicone around the glass. This is just to hold, to try and help hold this gasket in place. All right, I got the light, I mean the, the lens and gasket in there. Put that screw in. So to get the light to be grounded to the tractor, I take a utility knife and just scrape away some of the paint and scrape it off the bottom there. And it should have a connection. All right, I took it off and cleaned it up some more, and now it works. So now that the John Deere B is ready. We're going to bring it to the St. Patrick's Day Parade. So let's move the trailer. Little glow pugs.
We just run the front tires right to the front of this trailer. And just put one strap around the back. We got one chain on the back of the B, two straps on the front, then two straps on the front of the H. We ran out of the big straps, so I used the small ones, then one strap on the back of the H. After three years, probably hundreds of hours of work, and a couple thousand dollars, maybe more than that, I can finally say I'm done, but of course you're never done working on an antique tractor, it's always going to take little things here and there to keep them going. So hopefully you'll be seeing more of this tractor this summer, I plan to bring it to some poles. I have wheelie bars for it and I might change up the drawbar a little bit. So thanks for watching. Uh, leave a comment below if you have any suggestions about this or any questions. And stay tuned for the next video.